is only me. Hi, this is Kathy, and this is my second video with regards to Love Month. And the point that I'm looking at today is the point of that saying, you complete me. Or there's another saying in another movie that where the guy says to the girl, you make me want to be a better man. And that's the point that I, I want to look at because I can see where I existed is that when I used to believe that love was real. So when I would first fall in love within that energy, that high, you know, of oh, everything's just wonderful and cozy and exciting. And I would have all these emotions and feelings. And I never did even consider, of course, the thoughts that I had participated in prior to those, thought, those feelings and those emotions. And I didn't, of course, either look at the friction within that energy, realizing that our minds were just meeting and they were matching. And we were having like a meeting of minds, basically. Because basically, whatever you experience with another as falling in love is really only a relationship that you're having within your own mind. And, of course, within that energy between the friction of the two together, coming together, and what I see within that is it's an excellent point, this point of you complete me, is an excellent point that proves even more so that love isn't real and that love is abusive, that love is evil. Because if you look at it, when you say those words, if you look within yourself as you're saying that, you complete me. And again, whether it's directly at that person or whether you're just, you've said that to yourself and you're actually existing as that to where you believe that they complete you. It's a point of literally abdicating yourself from yourself. It's a point of relinquishing your power. It's a point of control. It's a point of saying, I can't take care of myself. I need you to take care of me. It's a point of not standing up and taking responsibility for yourself and thus taking responsibility for your world. And that is how love is. And that doesn't really make sense, does it? If love is real, and if love is so powerful, then it seems as though love would be responsible. If, if we were actually existing upon this earth within a point of real expressions, real physical expressions of love as who we are, then there would be no starving of children, 30,000 children plus daily. There would be no homeless on the streets begging for money. There would be no wars. There would be no murders and rapes. But when we're existing within that energy of love, we're existing within the polarity points. Because we all know that if you've ever heard of that great love affair, then you know that within that great love affair is that great hate. Because if you are with someone for any particular amount of time, whether it's a couple of months or six months or a year or two years or 10 to 20 years eventually you will get to a point where you're basically in hate you're no longer in love you are in hate it's inevitable we see it we've all seen it we in self honesty we understand this point but we get so caught up in that wanting to feel that thing and have that experience of ourselves, and we want that mad passionate shit you know and it's all fine until it isn't anymore and then we we fall and we fall hard and um, we don't consider that for every high there's a low and it's just like that positive and negative point with batteries that you put you know you're using in uh, different whatever it is you're using batteries for um, you've you've got to have a positive and a negative it, one doesn't exist without the other and that is the point of polarity that is absolutely keeping us separating ourselves from everything that's here and from each other. It's a point of energy. And when you begin to realize that energy isn't real and that love is like oh, a light bulb, I mean, it's going to burn out. When you begin to see that, it's the way we have abused it. You will realize 
you know who you are within it and and that is a point that I've really been looking at and I realized that I've I didn't want to face the evil that I have been I didn't want to see it and now I'm standing up and I'm beginning to take self-responsibility for who I've been what I've accepted and what I've allowed and I've realized that an equal money system is exactly the solution for our world because it will eliminate the stress because if you look at it if you take away the stress of money and you give everybody that opportunity to provide for themselves you probably already eliminated 80 percent of the relationships that exist today maybe more relationships will take on a whole new meaning because then you won't be depending upon someone for your very survival you will actually be able to care for yourself so we'll take away that stress with equal money we'll completely remove it you know if your car breaks down you can go fix it you're not going to stress out if you run out of food you don't have milk and bread at home you're not going to stress out because you can't feed your children because you don't have money because you're going to have money you're going to have the ability to feed and take care of your children so you're going to have a warm bed for them to sleep in and an education that's already prepared for them and that's a pretty cool thing when you begin to look at how important that is and how that will absolutely change everything so begin to look within yourself at what love is for you and who you've been within it and realize that in order for love to actually exist within our physical reality as a real actual expression as who we are it's going to require that we give as we would like to receive and that we face ourselves in self-honesty and we'll see as we're giving that we will begin to stop our seeking and we'll begin to stop our wanting and we'll begin to express and investigate equal money love follow sorrow